that's 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 this this chest piece here with the with the necklace and the um the pretty wings at the back and stuff um, and this like pretty side bit. You can actually see if I turn it off. You can kind of see like there's details on the skirt, uh, which are really pretty. I've dyed all of these pieces um, bright white. Hello, <laughs> someone's come to pose with me. Uh, bright white uh, in the video. Oh, the video, sorry. Uh, I've dyed the pieces bright white because to really get that sort of white mage pure feeling. Um, this this robe is white to begin with, but it's kind of a different kind of white, and the base, like the little details, are I think coloured. So I think I can actually view it. Um, yeah, so this is what it looks like undyed, and you can see the details are much more. Um, pronounced because it's yeah it's all it's all coloured and pretty but I really like it in pure white I think it looks really nice it's very subtle uh, the arm oh sorry you get the chest piece by doing PvP it's the only way to get the chest piece which originally really put me off it when I was first uh, putting this card together because I really hate PvP I'm bad at PvP it's, I don't find it fun um, but I did uh, swallow my pride run it a few times so that I could get the, the piece. It wasn't that difficult to get, to be honest. I probably got it within um, sort of two or three uh, runs of doing PvP the first time. Um, so the way the way that you get it is uh, when you do a, any PvP, you get given uh, what's called these wolf marks um, for winning or losing. To be honest, you get them even if you come last. Uh, you obviously get more for winning. And you can exchange them uh, for gear uh, when you get the marks. So that is um, that's kind of how I got a lot of my PvP. Well, all my PvP gear. It's not it's not really hard to get. You just have to sit through PvP. Um, I think one of the things I like most about this glamour is actually the rings. So it's kind of. Hang on. I wonder if I can go into. Um, So you can sort of see the ring there uh, on that finger, and then there's like a uh, there's, there's this like a star one uh, on this finger, and those are where are they? I don't normally bother with glamouring rings. Uh, the one on my left hand isn't actually glamoured. It's just uh, it's just. Is the Shaolin Perceptor's ring? So it's just a random ring that I found, but I think it's I think it's really pretty. Um, the arms are called the Aurus and Fingerless gloves, and I really like them because the the sort of gold on the ends of them really picks out the gold from you know the the chest piece, um, and it also lets me show off the the rings that I just mentioned. And then uh, last but not least, I don't.
So if you don't play Final Fantasy, probably one thing that's uh, pretty important is that when you start the game, you start with your class, and then when you hit level 30, you unlock the job. Now, I'm not sure why they've decided it this way, I think that's just because um, with other Final Fantasy games, that's, that's how it's been. Um, so for the most part, uh, your class has quite basic skills, and then when you unlock the job, you get sort of the more advanced ones. Um, most of these are obviously healing, there are a couple of damage spells. So arrow is a damage over time ability, so you obviously want that, want that on um, a boss at all times. Uh, if you're running uh, in a dungeon and there's trash, like, I'll probably put arrow on like, maybe two enemies if there's only two. If there's more than two, I tend not to bother. Um, and I use Holy, which is an AoE, so Area of Effect Damage ability. Um, it does a reasonable amount of damage, um, and it stuns the enemies, uh, which is actually really good damage mitigation. Um, obviously, if all the enemies are stunned, they're not attacking your tank, which means your tank's not taking damage. Uh, the other damage ability is Stone, uh, which eventually gets... Um, both Aero and Stone get upgraded into Dire and Glare, so they're th exactly the same, they do exactly the same thing, they're just called different things and they look a bit different. Um, but yeah, Stone is just, uh, you just cast it, it just does an instant amount of damage, and other than that, there's just a heck of a lot of uh, healing, so there's single target healing um, in Cure, Cure 2, uh, Regen, and Benediction is a big single target. Benediction is probably, on its own, the most powerful healing spell of all the healers. The reason is, is if you look at the description, it, you restore all of the target's HP. So, it, it doesn't matter how low they are, if you use this on a tank, they'll just be immediately put back to full life. It's really, really powerful. Um, it's got a really long cooldown, obviously. It's, um, three minutes because it's very very powerful um as a raw healing um there is a tank class called the dark knight which uh they have an ability which means that they become invulnerable to damage for a certain amount of time but during that time their hp drops to one they, they go down to one hp and if they are not healed back to full life in that time window, so I think it's about five seconds or so, I don't know exactly how long it is, if they're not healed back to full life by the end of that skill, they will die. Um, and because the other two healing classes don't have quite a strong like burst or raw healing, it's really, really good to pair a white mage with a dark knight, because if they ever use that ability, you just cast benediction on them and they immediately just go back to full life. It's a really, really good skill um, to pair with that tank. Um, there are some, some other, obviously, healing, uh, there's lots of AOE healing as well, so, uh, Medica 2 is pretty common, uh, Cure 3, a size is nice because it, it heals, uh, everybody within a radius of you, um, but it also does damage to the enemies, that's another sort of, it's sort of both at once, which is very nice, um, and probably the, the main thing about playing high-level white mage is that they unlock, um, they unlock what's called, this is called the secret of the lily, they unlock a lily gauge. Um, so essentially it just gives you a charge every 30 seconds in combat to use extra abilities. So this one is um, uh, a single target heal, I think it's got the same potency as this single target heal. Um, the main reason you would probably want to use this one uh, Fleet of Solace instead of Q3 is one because it's instant cast rather than a cast time. So instant cast spells are very good because it means you can um, you can move around like uh, in the cooldown after you use them. And also uh, it gives you a stack of what's called the Blood Lily, which is basically whenever you use a healing ability with your lilies. So that's a Fleet of uh, Solace or a Fleet of Rapture. Um, I think that's it. I think those are the only two at the moment. Um, it stacks the Blood Lily, and when you have three stacks of the Blood Lily, you get to use this spell, which is a massive damage spell to all the enemies. So, a lot of the White Mage is about balancing healing and damage. Um, that's one of the reasons.
reasons I enjoy playing healing in this game is it's not just sort of AFK spam heals on people. You do actually have a lot at your disposal to dish out some serious damage. Um, obviously not not as much as any DPS tank, uh, DPS class, uh, probably on par with some tanks. Uh, the White Mage especially is a very high damage class for a healer. Um, if you're in a group with a bad DPS, you can easily, if you're a good White Mage, you can easily out damage a bad DPS. Um, so it's just, it's just one of the reasons that I like, um, playing them. I'm actually not a very good White Mage. I'm, I'm okay. Uh, this is the only healing class they give you from the beginning of the game. I spent most of the game just healing. I didn't really focus on doing any damage and I, I picked up some really bad habits. Um, so I actually find it quite challenging to play white mage at high level. Um, so if you um, ever see me playing uh, any content, which is unlikely in an ASMR video, but um, I do stream this game from time to time. So. If I ever do do high level content, my point is that I never date my white mage because there are other white mages out there that are better than I am. Um, that brings me on to my second healing class uh, which I'm going to talk about today, which is called the Astrologian. Uh, this is my. I'll just take half of that thing again. This is my Astrologian glamour. I am so happy with this glamour. I just, I just love it. Um, you'll notice I am actually wearing a hat with this one because this hat's amazing. Um, I just, I love the colours. I love the, the mystical sort of feel of it. I feel it, it really does capture, um, you know, what I feel an absolute sh should be like. Um, the, most of the glamour itself is based off the chest piece. Uh, the chest piece is called a bone wicker soothers chest piece. Um, it's actually just a random drop from a dungeon. I don't even remember what dungeon. It's not a very high dungeon. It's maybe level 60-something, 70-something. Um, and the chest piece itself isn't even diable. So with most of my, um, with most of my glamours, a lot of the time it's, um, about dyeing the equipment or look colour-coordinated. But for the chest piece, you can't dye it. But I still love it. Um, if I just remove that temporarily, you can see hopefully that it's got this really like nice dark purple on like the top. Um, and then it's just, uh, yeah, it's sort of a mix of like yeah, greys and, and purples and pinks. And I just, I just think it's gorgeous. Um, so that's that's how I I started styling the glamour. Um, the hat here is. It's just called Welkin Hat. It's a hat you get given for doing your class, so only an astrologian can wear this hat. Um, it's just, it's just what the game gives you for progressing through the astrologian class quests, which I think I've done in another video. Um, I just really love the style of this. It looks really witchy. It looks really starry. Um, I love the, I love the way it sweeps and like the, the little, the little tip of it. It looks a bit like the Sorting Hat from Harry Potter. Um, but yeah, I just, I really love that hat. I can't. And similarly, I think the arms are also, uh, so they're called the Animos Constellation Armlets. So the Constellation Armlets are given to you again through through doing your class quests, um, but they're not diable, the ones that are just given to you. You have to do a bit of endgame, uh, well, you have to do a bit of grinding, essentially, to unlock the ability to dye them. So the original colours uh, for those is black, and for a while I, I did run the, the black ones, but I decided that I would grind out to dye them so I could have them purple, um, which is why they call, I guess, glamouring the true endgame, because you have to actually do quite a lot to, um, to get glamours looking really nice. Uh, the legs are called, um, the carp, carporundum, the carporundum trousers of healing. Now, these are not diable. These are from uh, a level 70 raid instance. Um, you can exchange them for the drops you get from the, the normal raid. There is a diable version of them, but it involves doing essentially the raid on a harder difficulty called Savage. And because the content's quite old, because it's level 70, like, it would be quite difficult to learn the savage like mechanics of it just for the sake of dying them and so i haven't done that yet i'm not sure if i will in the future but to be honest i don't think they look bad in black like there is a little bit of black on like the the main chest piece 
this. Um, I don't want everything to just be the same shade of purple, so I, do, I think they look quite quite nice so how, how they are. And um, and then I think that the last thing I'm quite happy with is uh, the shoes. Um, they're called the Gambler's Boots, so if I just... Um, 
is uh, you unlock it in the first expansion of the game. So uh, when you start the game, the only healer you have immediate access to is the uh, well, it's called the Conjurer before you get the job. Um, the Conjurer class right at the beginning of the game. The Astrologian you unlock during the first expansion and it gets given to you at level 35. So you start at level 35 in this class rather than level 1. Um, and yeah, you can't start the beginning of the game either. You have to you have to complete the base game and get to the first expansion before you unlock it. Uh, and then yeah, that brings us to the Scholar. So this is my Scholar Glamour. I'm not 100% sure that I'm completely finished with this glamour yet. Um, it's uh, it's it's getting there. It's I, I would say scholar is definitely one of those classes that I've changed my glamour on the most. Um, but this is the look I've gone with so far, and I do like it. But uh, I suspect that at some point I will change it. It's very very white, like my white mage, and I'm not sure that I want to keep that. I might go with a different color theme. But I, I also quite like having white because everybody knows I'm a healer, it's obvious that that's a class I'm playing. You know, if I start dyeing this stuff different colours, then I might look like a different class. Um, but yeah, I, do, I certainly like this. Again, it's got quite a striking hat on it. Uh, I like the blue, um, you know, so like the blue bits of, of, the, of the chest and the, and the sort of hat up there, or sort of green blue. Um, you know, I love the I love the detail like on the chess piece, like these ribbons and stuff. Um, I just I, I do I do think this is really really pretty. I'm less pleased with the um like with the shoes. Uh, with the bottom half, I do think I could probably improve that. But um, let's get to what we have anyway. Uh, oh, I should also show you my nice weapon. I really I really like this weapon. That's another uh, relic weapon actually that I grinded for ground grinded uh, for the um, for the glamour of it. Um, it just I just I just love how it glows. Um, so yeah, so the the headpiece is uh, the Dravanian hat of healing, which I think just drops from a dungeon. Uh, again, I don't remember which hat dungeon, but it's just um, it's nothing really special in terms of the gear. But I do like the way that it looks. Um, again very striking. Uh, the chest piece is called the True Linen Robe of Healing. I think I actually made that myself, so uh, I have quite a lot of the crafters, reasonably high level as well, um, as the uh, Disciple of War classes. And I, I made the robe myself to put in the glamour uh, chest so that I could glamour it, which I'm quite happy about. Uh, the arms are called the Star Velvet Long Gloves of Healing, and if I put my weapon away, um, I'll just... Just... Cheapos again. Uh, so you can see, again, like, they have a quite nice detail on them. Uh, they've got lots of gold, lots of different colours on them. Um, I just love how they sort of go alongside the coat. They're not a perfect match, but I just, I really like the design of them. Um, so yeah, those are, those are just a, a dungeon drop as well. Or in my case, I think I just bought them from the marketplace. Uh, and then here we have the legs. So I have, uh, it says it's a skirt of healing, the oven wall skirt of healing, but uh, they just look like leggings, really. Um, <laughs> So that's what these things are, with the little details on the front, the nice gold details. And then finally we have uh, the shoes, which are the true griffin sandals of healing. Uh, I think. Yeah, so. Um, again, so that's from this, uh, this down. The sandals are the... Uh, are my scholar's final look. Um, and again, like I do like how this, this look all goes together. Um, I'm certainly not disappointed, but I am I am thinking that I probably will, will change it soon. <laughs> uh, okay, so as an explanation or a base explanation of the the scholar class itself. Uh, you saw you just saw me 
that the scholar works is that it's mostly a shield orientated healer, so damage mitigation. Um, it, it can heal as well. Um, I, I used to think it was just pure shielding, um, but it's, it's sort of a mix of both. So your fairy automatically heals people passively, so if anyone takes damage, your fairy will automatically heal them um, a little bit. They'll, they'll, just, they'll just constantly cast. It's called Embrace. Uh, she does that herself. Um, she just... She just... Does it automatically. Um, so, it's quite nice because it means that, again, your fairy does a lot of the healing for you, and your job is sort of doing damage. <laughs> um, so again, you have a damage over time ability, uh, and then you have a couple of damage spells. You've got actually quite a lot of damage spells um, for a healer. Um, either ones that you cast or, or instant cast ones. Um, the main way that the scholar works is that you you have what's called aether flow and aether flow gauge. Uh, it might be easier to actually show you how it works if I just go to um, I'm just going to go to a training dummy and engage in so I can actually show you some of the abilities that you can use. But the, the main idea is that you gain stacks of Aether Flow and then you use those stacks to cast more healing spells. So similar, I guess, to the White Mage with their Lily Gauge and stacking up the Lilies to use the, the, the big damage spell at the end. Um, except that for the Scholar, if you don't have any stacks of Aether Flow, you <laughs> you literally cannot use those abilities. So, um, these ones that are greyed out on my hotbar, I can't use these at the moment because I don't, I don't have any Aether Flow. So, uh, I now have Aether Flow. I have these three gauges lit up. And now because of that, I can use these abilities. So, um, that's sort of half where the Scholar's healing comes from. Um, that spell that I just used to get the Aether Flow stuff is on a 60 second cooldown, so basically once a minute I can cast it to get three more stacks of, of that. Um, the other, um, so they, they just do different things, so there's sort of a big, a big bubble like this, which um, it casts regen on anybody standing in it, and it also reduces damage they take by 10% while they're in the bubble, um, so it's quite a good bubble in that sense. Um, the other way that the scholar works for spells is that you basically command your fairy to heal. So I mentioned that it automatically will heal allies when they're low, but I can also press buttons on my hot bar to make my fairy do things. Um, so the idea is, is that whilst I'm sort of standing here casting damage spells on the boss like this, I'm also issuing commands to my fairy to heal. Um, so again, it's another healing class that is a balance between when to do damage and when to focus on healing. Um, I find Scholar quite stressful compared to the other two classes because of the way that the Aether Flute Gauge works. Because if you find yourself needing to heal people with spells that use the Aether Flow, but you don't have any, um, it can be kind of stressful. There is a spell here called Dissipation, which, long story short, it basically, um, it sends your fairy away. So I've used all my three Aether Flow stacks now. It sends your fairy away so your fairy will stop passively healing and you won't have access to the commands to tell your fairy to heal. But if you use it, it automatically gives you three stacks of Aether Flow again. Um, so if your other, if your primary way of getting your Aether Flow stacks is on cooldown, you use that ability, which it's a bit sort of risky because you know, people aren't getting passively healed anymore, but you do at least have access to your sort of higher, higher power healing spells. So that's, that's kind of how the, the, the scholar works. Again, it's, it's more complicated and in-depth than that, but that, that's the idea. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's only, obviously that's only three, <laughs> three glamours, three healing classes that I've looked at. Um, and that's probably where I'm going to leave it for this video today. Uh, I actually, I, I love working on glamours. I've spent a lot of time putting together the glamours that I like, combining, um, you know, pieces of equipment that are essentially just random. Um, I think it's a really nice way to get creative uh, in, in, in the game. I feel like it's a sort of nice small creative outlet. Um, and yeah, especially at the moment where there's not a lot of new content yet because we're waiting for a new patch to come out, which will actually come out.
actually just started becoming um, a Final Fantasy XIV streamer. I used to um, stream sort of other kinds of games. So if you are at all interested in uh, seeing me play these classes and others uh, sort of in the flesh, as it were, then uh, I will leave a link to my Twitch channel in the description of this video. Otherwise, uh, I really hope you enjoyed uh, this kind of style of video. Please let me know if you did. I have so many more glamours <laughs> to show you guys, uh, including some of the... I have some crafting ones as well. Um, and obviously, my, my main sort of goal slowly in the game is to get every class a level 80. And then when every class is level 80, I really want to have a glamour sort of for each class. So it's quite a big 